Hello, my name is Laurie and I'm an astrologer. So today we're going to talk about Virgo Ascendant or Virgo Rising. Now, the Ascendant is the sign that was rising in the East at the moment that, that you were born. And it's, I would say, the most important part of the chart because it sets up the whole wheel for the whole person's birth chart, which is the most important thing. Okay. So, for the first house ruler, we have Mercury. So these people are usually very youthful looking. They usually look a lot younger than they actually are. They overanalyze things a lot. So, because we have Mercury here in the house of personality and self, they can have tendencies to overanalyze, worry a lot. They have a lot of nervous tension within them. So they can have a nervous disposition. They usually look very innocent, very clean, very, very fresh, I would say, and very simple, if you like. They have a very simple look. They like to look perfect. They do like to look very, very nice. That's very important to them. Uh, but they can be very, very self-critical as well. And they can beat themselves up and they can focus in on what's wrong, which is very Virgo. They can focus in on the problems a lot of the time. And they, you know, even when it comes to themselves. So this this is, is one of their concerns with having Mercury um, ruling the, the Ascendant and being the chart ruler as well. So how to overcome this is... The individual would want to focus more on the other person who they are with. So they would want to be more of a Pisces, which is opposite Virgo, in their personal one-on-one -on -one relationships. And when they're giving to others, this helps Virgo a lot to take that pressure off of themselves. So giving unconditionally to other people is really going to help the Virgo Ascendant. Now, on the second house... We have Libra here, so we have Venus. So this is an amazing placement for making money, okay? So this is a really, really good good position for finances. So Virgo Ascendants usually make a lot of money in their lives, which you'll be glad to hear if, if you are a Virgo Ascendant. And the second house also represents our voice. And with us having Venus here, they usually have a very beautiful, pleasing voice. A voice that is very easy to listen to. I mean, this is just a general flavour. Uh, so we do look at the position of the planet. So for example, if we looked at Venus for this, because it rules the second house, this would give us an indication to what that person earns day to day. So this could give us lots of clues on what that person would be good at doing in order to make money. So this position is really, really good for developing a high self-esteem. So eventually the, the native will, you know, achieve this high level of self-esteem. They may have some problems. We have to look at the position of Venus. If, they're, if it's being aspected by Saturn or, you know, an opposition with Mars or something like that, the person may have a lot of you know, self-esteem issues to work through in their life, but they do get there eventually. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. So it just, yeah, we, again, this is just a general brief um, of the Ascendant. So yeah, usually very good. And they're usually attracted as well to relationships where the partner makes a lot of money. So for them, when they are choosing a partner, it's important that that partner makes you know, a, a good a good amount of money. They're attracted to money in a partner. It's something that they actively look for. So they want a partner who is wealthy or they will be attracted to wealth in, in, in another individual as well. So this can show us that this person can be good in, in you know, Venusian industries. So they can be good in the beauty industries. They can be good at any in, in any industry that requires any kind of relating or relationships you know, uh, mediation, all those kind of things, interior design. They can also be very, very good at, you know, having cleaning companies, things like that. So, and aesthetics as well. So these are just a few of the, the things that, that, that this person could be very good at. But 
you know, we have a look at the whole chart when we're looking at career as well. Okay, so the third house, we have Mars here. So the third house covers a lot of different things. And we have Scorpio and Mars here. This can show a difficult relationship with the sibling. It's usually the, the younger sibling, but it can be any sibling. But the third house generally rules our younger sibling. So this can show a difficult relationship with that that sibling in particular. So you may be more controlling with them. If you if you had this ascendant, you may be more domineering with, with, with your younger sibling. And yeah, so, so that relationship might just have a few problems with it because Mars is, is an aggressive planet. So that aside, this native usually has lots of courage and it usually has lots of courage in these third house, house industries. So, you know, publishing, writing, speaking, social media, putting themselves out there in magazines, being in the press, you know, writing, speaking, teaching, all of these kind of things they will be very, very good at, very brave, very brilliant in those industries. And because Mars is such an aggressive planet, they will keep pushing to get what they want. And they usually do get what they want as well because like I say, Mars is, is, is the warrior, he never gives up, so they are very good in these industries and they will generally lead in these industries in some way, they will be a leader in that industry. And this, this native actually, if they want to, I mean Virgo Ascenders are usually so loving and respect Right, respectful of other people but if if they see someone who is being bullied or if they see something that they don't like they literally can tear a person apart verbally so that they're you know you know that there's nothing left of that person they can really really attack someone for you know, if, if they're doing something that, that the Virgo Ascendant doesn't like, and the Virgo Ascendant is very noble and very wise, so they will not attack you unless you deserve it. You know, so if they do, then this is for a reason, and that person can reduce you to nothing because they are so, they have such a sharp tongue when they feel that there's been some kind of injustice. Okay, so... As a result of this, they can have very strong opinions and they generally lead in conversations. They like to dominate conversations and they like their opinions to be heard. And they can they may even force these on, on people um, at certain times because they believe that their, their opinions are right and they will fight for, for what they believe is right. And they will even fight for the underdog as well. They will fight for the people who can't fight for themselves. So Virgo Ascendant is very, very good at these things and they're not afraid to speak up about it as well. Okay, so the fourth house, we have Sagittarius here. So we have Jupiter here. So what this can show is that one of the parents may have been very spiritual in a very progressive way. So one parent may have been a Sagittarius, they may have been a Pisces, they, or they may have just had these kind of energies. So, you know, Pisces can be very dreamy, very artistic, very, very loving. It can also be quite addictive. So this, this ascendant can have a, a parent who is an addict or they can just have, you know, a parent who's very philosophical and very spiritual. So this, this position is also very good for property investment. So if you're not involved in property investment or property development or anything like that, this would be a good area for you as a Virgo Ascendant to get into because you'd be blessed with a lot of good luck in this area. So you'd have very good intuition and very good foresight in this area. So, so if you're not doing that, that would be something to consider because you would be naturally good at that. Okay. So this also shows that you have a lineage, a family lineage, and this can be an ancestral thing of philosophers and healers within your bloodline and you have this in you have these gifts that have been passed on in some way you know these can be various different gifts but they're usually something spiritual and something psychic those kind of things so so we have jupiter here ruling the fourth house so what we would do is we would look at jupiter to find out more about this gift 
that's that's been passed on. So using the example of say Jupiter was in the 10th house for example, this, this would be someone who is going to use those ancestral gifts in their career. Okay, so we're always looking at, at what that planet's doing elsewhere in the chart when we're looking at the Ascendant to get more information. Okay, so these people usually love freedom and they usually move away from their, their homes, either their hometown or their, you know, they usually move out very early as children. They can't wait to get out and break free. They love freedom. Sagittarius loves to be free and you know, you may move home a lot, you may move to a different part of the world. This is quite common for this ascendant, you know, settling in a foreign land. So yeah, you may have moved lots of times, you may have, you know, you, you may love to move, you may get really itchy feet if you stay in one place for too long and you, you, you feel like you need to change something. So that urge will have been there from, from, an, from an early early part of your life. And it's probably still with you now as well because it's so such a big part of your personality. Okay, the fifth house we have Saturn here. Okay. Okay, so yeah. So th this one's a little bit tough. So the fifth house rules rules children. And in a Virgo Ascendance chart, this, this represents where we are m most likely to see losses in a Virgo Ascendant's uh, life. So yeah, it's a bit of a touchy subject this, I'm gonna do my best to say it in, in, in a nice way. Okay, so these people can sometimes have more problems getting pregnant, you know, um, things like that. You know, they can have, you know, they can have more miscarriages sometimes, like, you know, fertility may not be as easy for them. You know, they usually get get children eventually, but there they may be a bit of a struggle there. Not always. It, this is how it can express. The planets can express in many different ways, but this is how it can express. And some people have even, you know, lost children um, with this ascendant. Um, I myself have this ascendant, and when, when I uh, finally... When I was studying uh, my astrology, I lost my son in, in 2015 and I found it very healing to see that, that, that I would experience losses of the fifth house. It, it gave it like a very spiritual meaning for me and I found solace in it. So if that does speak to you, I hope you find solace in that too. So yeah, that that gave a lot of spiritual meaning to me. So so these are just things that we that we we have to be careful of, okay, and aware of. There can sometimes be difficulties in getting pregnant. I have a, an amazing healthy little boy now after that happened. So there are sometimes some difficulties here with children in some way. So this person, because we've got Saturn here restricting the fifth house of children, they can sometimes find parenting more difficult. You know, they can sometimes not get as much enjoyment out of the things of the fifth house. So they may be you know, they may just find being a mom harder or a dad harder and or they may, you know, they, they they may just not be able to get that that full enjoyment out of it. And they may not particularly like things of the fifth house. So the fifth house rules gambling, so this ascendant's probably not drawn to that, probably doesn't like playing competitive sports and and sometimes may even find it a bit harder to let loose, have fun and have a good time. You know, they they can sometimes be a bit more serious. Um, and stuff like that. Okay, so the sixth house we have Aquarius here. So we've got Uranus and Saturn here. So we always, so the sixth house rules our day to day work, but most of the time it rules our health. So we, we do look to the position of Saturn when, when we want to get more information on the health. So if you've got a really well aspected Saturn, then, then, then that's, that's good. So, more than anything, this ascendant shows, with having Aquarius here, it can just show that the health problems that you usually get may be more mental health problems. 
and these these can be overcome by having a really lovely spiritual practice meditating you know having psychotherapy all those kinds of things but this person will usually have more mental health problems things like depression you know suicidal tendencies and sometimes even kind of they can have Aquarius can be have a very like schizophrenic way of thinking, so they can believe things that aren't true or or think things that have happened that haven't you know that kind of thing um yeah, so paranoid thoughts, all these kind of things so these are the things health wise that this person will probably suffer and struggle with more more than most. Um, but like I say, you, you know, there's always a solution to every problem. Once you know yourself, you know what to do to get the best out of yourself. So I think know yourself as best as you can, and that's why I love astrology. So yeah, just just look after your mind. You know, don't do too much. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. You know, don't socialize too much. Socialize a bit, but make sure you're having that time for yourself. That's very important for Virgo ascendants. You know, just just look after your mind and your soul and your body. Meditate. You know, have a spiritual practice, and and yeah, like I say, just just make an effort to be, be as healthy as you can, uh, and that will help help that a lot. Okay, so Virgo ascendants usually um, do really well with a nice rhythmic life, you know, really nice, you know, yoga and all those kind of things, Not lots of walks in nature. So, so in the seventh house, a very important house, it's one of the angles in astrology, we have Jupiter here. So we have Pisces ruling this, this house. So what this shows is this person will have a very lucky marriage. So this this native will will end up with a really love unconditionally loving partner, um, you know, a, a very spiritual partner. Usually, they they can also um, attract more addicts than normal. But just because your partner's an addict doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you can't make it work. You know, their addictions difficult, and this ascendant just attracts more um, addicts than than other signs but that this shows a very loving wonderful marriage where the partner is very loving can't do enough for you wants to do lots for you you know so even if you've had some relationship problems um early on in life which uh, virgo ascendants sometimes do because they do attract these uh, addicts who need help and often need rescuing in some way and those kind of things so <clears throat> if you've had that just you know keep the faith and just understand that that lucky marriage and partnership is is coming and and you know you will be blessed with a very happy marriage and this marriage is going to be very lucky for you so if you look at where jupiter is placed in the chart that will give you more information on your spouse that will give you more information on the marriage and yeah so so we can see when we look at jupiter more about what sign your partner might be uh, where you're going to meet them this is why having a full birth chart done is is a great idea which i do offer uh, i will leave the details at the end so yeah, so they usually attract a lot of addicts and yeah, but they usually become a lot luckier once they commit to, to a marriage. So once they have that solid bond with, with their partner, the, their luck increases a lot as well. So, so they will find solace in, in, in this nice marriage. So the eighth house, we have Mars here. So these people are very, very sexual. They have a very high sexual appetite. They don't always look like they'd be like that because they're so like innocent looking because Virgo is very clean and very sophisticated and never rude or brash or anything like that. They may not always look like it. They may do, that depends on lots of other things, but they usually have an amazingly high sexual appetite. They have usually gifts of clairvoyance. So this is because the eighth house rules death. And we have Mars here and Mars rules the head. So these people can usually communicate with the other realms and with the other side. They may even be attracted to S and M type relationships. Mars is a very aggressive planet and, and 
the eighth house is our sexual desires. So they can, you know, they like to go and go and go and they've got so much passion and they, they, they love sex, you know, they live for it. And they may even have a taste for more, you know, violent, aggressive types of, of sex within the relationship as well. You know, they may love to be dominated, for example, which is very Aries. And the good thing about this, this position is it does show great strength, great physical strength, lots of stamina, and also shows great longevity as well. So yeah, it, it, it can, there, there are theories out there that it can, this position can indicate a very quick and fast death. Um, and things like that. So usually you, when it is your time to, to pass away, it will happen very, very quickly and you won't suffer a lot, which is really, really good. Okay, so the ninth house we have Taurus here, which is again Venus. So these natives usually love traveling and they believe in, in, in traveling and, and ha that traveling is important to open your mind they believe in, in the value of, of traveling and they also believe in the value of, of eating healthy, of living a healthy life and eating right. They're very knowledgeable and clued up about food and nutrition and they usually believe in this and they believe in, you know, eating a healthy diet, eating organic, all this kind of thing. They, yeah, they believe in Okay, so, and they usually know a lot about, as well as food and nutrition, they usually know a lot about cooking, they're usually very good cooks, and they're usually very good at finances and managing finances as well. They're usually very interested in money and they like to study money and invest in, in these types of things because they have a very good way of, of, of computing that information in a way that others don't. So they can be have a very mathematical mind and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so the 10th house we have Mercury here, so we have Gemini. So these people usually excel in careers which are based around writing, speaking, PR, publishing, social media, teaching, selling, anything with the internet, teaching. These are all very, uh, you know, Mercurian subjects. So they will excel in any one of these, these areas. And also when you have your midheaven in Gemini, so the 10th house is, is the highest point in the chart. This is called the midheaven. So when you have your midheaven in Gemini, these people like to do lots of different things. They will usually have one career doing, you know, maybe being a freelance journalist, and then the next minute they're on YouTube, or, you know, they, they like to do lots of different things, as many things as possible. So, yeah, so you this is important, because Gemini is very curious. He likes to learn and experience and do, and once he's mastered something, he wants to move on to the next thing, and he's very, interested in lots of different things and you want to do as much as possible in this lifetime while you're here and you should because you have such money making potential and you're so good at these these third house subjects and you're so good at teaching these these subjects and you know communicating in the way that you do so these are all places where you would excel in some way so the 11th house, we have the moon here, so we have cancer. So the 11th house rules rules our friends usually. It does rule um, lots of other things as well. Um, so this generally shows someone who has very deep ties with, with their friends. They usually have very loving relationships with their friends. Their friends are like the their family, their friends are the family that they choose choose themselves. So, yeah, they they have deep love for their friends, and they're very good friends, and they see their friends as just as important as their family. They make their friends their family, and then finally we have the twelfth house, which is ruled by the sun. So these people shine in any area that incorporates 
spirituality, healing, imagination, creativity, you know, anything sci-fi, futuristic, you know, anything to do with the film industry, all these kind of things, these people will excel in. And also helping people to recover from addiction, things like that. They will excel in, you know, jobs where they're in anywhere that's secluded. So they will be really successful if they run their own retreats. They will be amazing if they're in like, like a working in, say for example, a secure psychiatric unit or a prison or, you know, a, like, you know, some kind of, you know, going into buildings and teaching schools, things like that, you know, and also these people really, really shine and really come into themselves when they spend time alone as well. So Virgo Ascendants need to spend time alone because this is where their imagination comes alive. This is where they realize just how, you know, creative and special and wonderful that they are. So that if you are a Virgo Ascendant, make sure you get plenty of time to yourself. That's very important. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I love making them. I'm quite new to YouTube, so I'd really appreciate you if you would like and subscribe my video and share it with anyone who you know who is a Virgo Ascendant who would benefit from uh, listening to this video. And I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you would like to have a chart made up by myself, I will pop my website down below. Please go there and do send me a message and I will send you information on how to book. And I would really appreciate that. There is a little weight at the moment on my charts. It's because I write them all out by hand. Um, I write them, not, not by hand, sorry. I, I type them all out specifically on you. They take me about eight hours. So you get the document to keep. And then it takes me about two hours to go through that with you on a video call. So I put a lot of effort into the charts. Um, so yeah, so that's why there's a way. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. And please make the most of yourself. Accept and love yourself for who you are. And if you are with someone who has this ascendant, I hope it helps you to understand them better and have better relationships with them because that is my main goal for having this channel is to help people have better relationships with one another. So I really hope you enjoyed the video and take care and I will put all my social media etc down there. It's been lovely. Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah